Brian Gillespie with Able Distributors. I wanted to do a little bit of an intro before we get into the static pressure testing video because there's a lot to be said about it. So a lot of people compare static pressure with blood pressure in your body and it's exactly what it's like. The more the pressure, the higher the number, the worse it is. So I always think about static pressure as something that eats CFM, eats airflow. So the higher the static pressure, the more CFM it's gonna eat. So you can literally go from a, a 0 0.50 external static pressure, and by external, it's everything outside the furnace. When you go from a 0.5 to a 1.0, that little bit of difference, honestly, is not that hard to achieve. A, a few mistakes in that ductwork, and you're gonna hit it. You can go from 2000 CFM that you think you're getting to 1400 CFM that you're actually getting. So it's important to know what your static pressure is doing and how to test it. Today, I wanted to talk to you about static pressure. It's something that we all need to know. We need to check, but very few contractors actually do it. So typically we start at total external static pressure. And by external, what we're talking about is everything outside the furnace. So everything on the supply duct from the top of the furnace away and everything from the side of the furnace away on the return duct, everything outside the furnace. So to check total external static pressure, you're gonna drill a hole in the side of the furnace. Yes, it is a hole in the side of the furnace. I suggest a step bit so you don't go all the way through. A hole in the front top of the furnace in the side below the A-coil, and then a hole in the side of the furnace in the blower compartment. Now, when you do a static test, you're gonna have probes like this, which have an arm, you want these facing into the wind. If you can't do it as long as they're both facing the same way, you can face it the other way, but typically we can put them into the wind. So you're gonna have a probe facing down up top, a probe facing down. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these two numbers. This will be a negative, that's gonna be a positive, it doesn't matter. So I use the UEI 201. It's a nice, nice little piece of equipment. So you're gonna take these two numbers, add them together. So on this furnace, this was actually my sister's furnace. I had A, the pressure inside the furnace up at the supply side was a 0.22 and a negative 0.39 down below. We're gonna add those up, it's 0.61. Almost every single furnace manufacturer out there wants a total external static pressure not to exceed 0.50. So obviously we exceeded it. So next we wanna see where. So we can always already tell with the reading up here being lower than here, I can already tell you that the problem is gonna be on the return, not on the supply, but we're gonna check them both out. So the next step is to check the filter. How much restriction, how much are we losing going across that filter? So now we take we leave one probe in in position B in the blower compartment, and we're gonna put another one with the probe facing up since the return air comes down. And we're gonna take B, subtract D, and that's gonna tell us how much we're losing across that filter. So in this situation, B again was 39. That's not gonna change from what it was before. D, I had 19 here. So that means we're losing 0.2 across the filter. Most filters are 0.1. So we know we got an issue there. It could be a pleated filter, it could be a dirty filter, or just a dense filter, or actually a wrong size filter. Maybe we could go with a bigger filter. So we know that between here and here, we're losing two tenths of a, a, an inch of water column, and that's a lot. It should, be, it should be half of that. So we know something's going on there. But that tells us another thing. It tells us that all the duct work past that the static is 0.19, and that's also kind of high. So we're seeing more problems on the return side in this scenario than on the supply side, but let's double check it. So now we're gonna check the pressure drop across that A-coil. So typically we allow for 0.2 across the A-coil, depending on the coil, an N-coil from carrier might be more. So we put the probe back in at position A, facing down. We're gonna make a hole in a plenum above the A-coil, Again, face the probe down. We're gonna take that minus that. So we've got 22 still here. And then on the top of the A coil is 0.08. So 
So that means the A coil drop is 0.14. We allow for 0.20, so we're good there. And that also tells me that every single thing, every ounce of ductwork past that, the static is 0.08, so that's pretty low. So now, if you look at what we've done here, we can tell you now that the ductwork on the supply is plenty good at 0.08, the ductwork on the return at 0.19, and the filter at a 0.20, those are our issues. So if we were to take that filter and go with a bigger filter, or maybe a fiberglass filter, we'd probably drop that in half. And if we added one more uh, return duct, we'd probably get that back down to match the 0.08 and then we'd be good. If you're curious what you lose from going from a, a 0.61 down to a 0.50, what you would lose here by this difference, this is what the, the duct work is, should be. This is what it is. We lost 65 CFM and we gained three degrees of temperature rise just with that. And that I'm telling you, this isn't actually a bad situation. You're gonna come across situations where you're gonna do your total static and it's gonna be one point something. And then you know you're gonna be off the charts. Most charts take you up to 0.8 and then they give up. At, at that point, the difference between a 0.50 and a 0.8 might be 200 CFM, that's half a ton. It might be seven degrees temperature rise. So you can see how the airflow and that static starts to affect it. So when you do these numbers, you can instantly tell where to look. Instantly, with this being a, a 2.2 and this one being a, a 0.39, I knew the issues were gonna be on the return. It's the higher number, it's an easy way to go. So on this, all the supply duct work out to be 0.08 static. All the return duct, 0.19, I think that's a little high. And the total is 0.61, which again is high. And it's not like a gray area. Typically, it's that 0.5, if it's, it's either above or below that, there's not really a gray area. Sometimes there's nothing we can do, but knowing that there's nothing we can do, at least you can change the filter, you can change the drop, you can make sure the A coil is clean, you can do everything you can if it's a finished basement, or ductwork you just can't get to, you're kind of stuck. But I've had situations with even just changing out the floor registers to a wide open uh, floor register design, like a stamped steel instead of a wood, changing out return grills to where the spacing is 3 16th of an inch instead of an eighth of an inch. So if you get a house where it's an eighth of an inch and it's been painted 15 times over the last 20 years, that could be some of your issue right there. So in future videos, we're gonna Go through this again. I'm gonna do a live fire. We're gonna actually do it on a furnace, but hopefully this gets you started in static pressure testing and what to look for. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors, thank you.